It's time for some more Williams Road to Glory, but before we jump into today's episode, I want to give you guys a massive, massive shout out. I really, really appreciate the support so far, guys. The first three episodes have done so well, and we're actually keeping a decent kind of consistency, which is quite great. Normally, episode one comes out, and then it all just drops, but you guys are loving this series. I appreciate all of the support, and I'm really thankful for it. If you haven't seen the previous episode at Vietnam, I'll leave a link up in the top right, along with a full link to the entire playlist so far, down below in the description but today we are here for the chinese grand prix and it's the last race before we jump into the european season and we start to get some serious upgrades onto the car so hopefully you guys are excited and uh, yeah this is not one of my best tracks so we might be in a bit of trouble here so if you guys are going to enjoy the episode then feel free to leave a like it really really helps me out guys let's try and hit over a thousand actually let's try and hit over 1200 likes on this one i feel like that might be a possibility so i'm going to challenge you guys there and subscribe for more daily f1 content guys we're on the way to 60,000, so let's see if we can try and get there soon but yeah enjoy the episode and hopefully it's a decent one now as always we look at the weather forecast and the race is going to be wet there is rain expected and of course we had rain last weekend in vietnam we've read again this time in china um, a wet to dry race is what the weather forecast says we then look at the r&d graph and most teams have brought a raft of upgrades this weekend some big big improvements to most teams and you know we brought a minor upgrade of our own but it hasn't been the kind of level of improvement compared to every other team we were meant to have this upgrade here arrive for the aerodynamics but unfortunately it failed which is a shame because it was a major upgrade instead now we're actually a bit further away from the midfield you know Renault, AlphaTauri, McLaren they've all kind of pulled away a little bit in terms of the performance chart so we need to work to try and claw that back and hopefully get back on terms very soon nonetheless though we jump into practice and again this is part of you know getting those R&D points back and trying to get back on form so we had a decent session we scored near enough almost 800 points actually it was a decent um, session for us and we take our total up to 1300 points we'll hopefully have a few more extra points as well at the end of the episode but with that said we now move into qualifying and we kick off the weekend with q1 as you can see nice sunny skies no sign of rain here today and um, of course in terms of tires and setup we can just go all out because we don't have to save anything for the race because it's going to be in the rain so here we are q1 and this is currently my first lap my banker as always we try to go for two runs in q1 now because that way if i do get through i save some tires which is important because obviously you want to try and stay competitive so here we are at the end of the first lap now making our way up towards the final corner turning in and breaking up the 50 meter board and just full commitment to the run to the line and to be fair it felt like a decent lap we go ahead of george russell and matsushita behind kofiat and ricardo and uh, we set a, a mid-29, which is not too bad. I think 29, I can just about read that on my screen. Um, but we now move on to my final lap in Q1. And we are P15 right now. So to get into Q2, we need to improve. So this lap is it. We need to do a good one here. So the pressure's on. Let's go for a full lap of the Shanghai circuit. here we go then running up to the line and we do improve by three and a half tenths but unfortunately it 
is not enough. We are going to be eliminated from qualifying one. Roman Grosjean just scraped through in P15 for the Alfa Romeo team, so fair play. We couldn't quite make it. You know, we was looking okay, but I lost a little bit of the hairpin, and that may have just cost us getting through. So a bit of a shame, really. You know, I didn't get the hairpin right. Besides that, the lap was pretty strong. The car felt great, and there wasn't much more pace in the car. It would have been P15 at best. So, yeah, a bit of a disappointing one, but that is going to be it for us in qualifying here today. And we're now going to move into the race, of course, where the rain is going to fall, and it's going to really help open up the race. So let's jump into it, and let's see how we get on here at the Chinese Grand Prix. It's time to find out which driver is up to the task of claiming the Chinese Grand Prix. We're here in Shanghai. The ever-tightening turns one and two will prove tricky in the slippery conditions here at Shanghai, and anyone that slides wide will lose a lot of time getting back on track. Turn 14 should still be the best place for overtaking, but we'll have to see some improvement in the weather before the drivers can take advantage of that DRS assistance. Anthony Davidson also joins me in the commentary box today. Let's start with Alfa Romeo. We have a number of changes to the aerodynamic regulations this year. The signs haven't looked good for them so far in terms of getting to grips with those changes. It doesn't look promising for them so far. And if the new regs have hit them as hard as we think, well, I suspect they may need a few late nights at the factory to get back on track. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Ricardo, Carlos Sainz, and Norris, Perez, Gasly, Ocon, and Lance Stroll, Kvyat, Albon, they've taken a grid penalty, Roman Grosjean, and Fettel, Martinez, Leclerc, George Russell, and Kevin Magnussen, Giovinazzi, and Nobuharu Matsushita. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. Okay, guys, here we are then. It's time for the race at China. And uh, we start from P15 on the grid, benefiting from a grid penalty to Charles Leclerc. And yeah, it's absolutely throwing it down. Full rain, you know, heavy rain conditions, of course. Full wet tyres are going to be needed for the start of the race. And in terms of the strategy, the one key thing here is we're going to underfuel the car by 2.1 laps. I'm going to go very light on fuel very aggressive it should be pretty easy to save especially through that middle sector and uh, yeah you want to start lighting the rain because naturally you're going to recover a lot of fuel and you can't really burn enough you know you can't run rich mix all the time because you need lead mix for the traction zones so yeah pretty much we're going to go quite aggressive on fuel hopefully that will improve our pace and we'll be a bit more competitive and yeah we're going to start the race on the full wets possibly switch to inters and then of course maybe even dryers at the end it's, it depends how the weather kind of progresses so i like it i'm looking forward to it it's going to make for an exciting race we weren't that quick in the dry so this might be our silver bullet in terms of potentially scoring some points here today so let's jump into it and let's see how we get on here in the chinese grand prix okay here we go let's go down to lean revs and let's see what kind of start we get as the lights come on here at shanghai lights out and away we go it's going to be a bit of a slow start for us i think on the pedals as well our starts haven't been that great lately we get overtaken by leclerc and magnuson but i'm going to go with around the outside that's usually the place you want to be at this track around the outside you're going to have a lot of joy and find a lot of space as you can see here we're making a bunch of moves around the outside now into turn two it gets a little bit tight but crucially we're back up to p15 and now p13 as we make up two more places so there you go the outside line working beautifully for us as we head down towards the hairpin let's see if we can pick up one or two more places here down the inside of uh, kafia and also albon as well a bit of a double dive Looks like Albon will just about get back ahead though. Can we swing this around the outside through here? It's going to be close, but I think it's going to be pretty tricky. Yeah, and Albon gets ahead as expected. So back down to P12. But that's a good start from us after a poor getaway. We recover well. Can't see a damn thing at the minute in the spray, I've got to be honest. But it's a good clean start. Obviously having the very low fuel is going to really help us out. So we need to use that in this first part of the race and, you know, try and... Hopefully, take full use of the fact that we're very light on fuel. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Of course, no DRS in this race for now. So, it's all about the old fashioned racing of, you know, getting those exits right, a bit of slipstream, a bit of a dive bomb if necessary. So, uh, let's see how it goes. Of course, as always, the AI will run full ERS power and deployment for the first two laps. 
So we've just got to try and hang in there for now. And then eventually, once the AR turn their engines down, we can start to make a little bit of progress. But let's see what happens here. Into the hairpin, the AI probably will break quite early. We're going to have a little look around the outside of Albon here. Oh, that's nice. We're going to get the drive out of there as well, for good measure. And there we go, make it work. Lovely to overtake. Running a bit hot though into the final corner. That's going to cost me. I've got to be careful with the traction. And that's going to allow Albon to get back ahead for now. Can we keep our nose in? I'm just going to back off there. I don't want to go for a move like that so early on. We'll just sit back for now. But an explosive start to the race, that's for sure. Okay, there's a bit of information in terms of the weather. So it looks like we've still got a little while yet on these. But the plan is simple. We're going to try and just get straight into the intermediate. I'm not going to box for another set of wets because that would just not work. So that could be a, an opening for us in terms of strategy, that's for sure. So for now, we're doing a good job. Pace is decent. We're going faster and faster every lap, which does indicate there is some track evolution and the conditions improving slightly. But for now, we're in a bit of a train and just chilling in P12, to be honest. This corner right here, turn five, it's definitely a sendable corner, if that's even a word. Definitely feels like I could pass Albon there, to be fair. I feel like I'm just starting to get a bit quicker now. Pace is starting to improve, and I'm starting to look for ways through. And it's going to happen in the first part of the lap, because the second part of the lap, I lose a lot of time to the AI. Starting from now, especially this section right here, if you look at the gap to Albon and then Kafiat behind, you'll see how it flips right here. The AI just gets so much traction through there, and I can't really match it. And uh, yeah, it kind of puts me on the back foot because then I can't get the run on the back straight. So it needs to happen down towards turn five, to be honest. I feel like we could go for the inters, actually, looking at the amount of rain. I might gamble here and roll the dice. As I say, that cars are pitting anyway. New strategy is available on the MFD. And there you go. I was going to do it. Copy. Right, intermediate time. Let's go. Get it all slowed down going to run it in rich mix in the pit lane so that we burn fuel. I don't want to be saving fuel just yet. Hopefully we hold up a couple of cars or something. Let's see how this goes. Looks like there's no one in behind us. So there's not many cars pitting for Inter. So this could be a good stop for us for an undercut. Here we go. Ah, damn it. Didn't quite get it. But still, we're pretty close to Alex. I might be able to get him here though. On the cold tyres maybe if we're aggressive enough. And just send it off the get-go, off the rip. You see Alex is a bit slow. We're going to... Go straight down the inside here and make it straight away. There we go. Lovely. Using the fact that the AI are struggling on cold tyres, maybe. This is a big outlap. We need to be quick because we could potentially undercut loads of cars here and leapfrog our way into the point. So this is going to be a big push lap. Russell in the pit lane, along with a few others. But not everyone has pit. There's still some cars that are staying out for another lap. So two purple sectors from me. I'm giving everything here. And look at this. We're going to come out pretty close to Ricardo and signs so here we go around the outside we're going to cut back underneath to get the mclaren lovely and we're now behind bottas no idea where valtteri was in terms of his former position but we were we are much higher than what we were so the timing of that pit stop has worked out perfectly for us i predicted it i called it just before we got offered the change in the strategy and my suspicions were confirmed so we're now behind valtteri let's go for another lap here there's still some cars we're probably staying out so we're getting a few more places, so we've definitely jumped well into the points here with that, which is incredible. I've actually got a bit of a run on Battle Valtteri Bottas here. I'm going to use a bit more ERS. Pull about a little send, but Valtteri's actually pretty good on the brakes there. But on his hour lap, he's not been that quick. So let's see. We're going to now find out the rest of the cars, where they are. I do need to start thinking about saving a bit of fuel now at this stage. As, of course, we're not on the inters. We haven't got very long left on these tyres because then we're going to switch to drives. And look at that. We are running in P7. There's Ocon. And we've jumped him. He was just ahead of us. We've got Gasly rejoining on cold tyres. I'm going to use Gasly here to try and maybe have a look around the outside of Bottas into turn two, which becomes the inside. Cheeky move here. If we can pull this off. Who's going to get the traction? It's going to be Bottas, but we're going to edge ahead. And make the move up into P6. Look at that. What a strategy. What a call. Up into the top six and ahead of Bottas. Seems like Bottas has no pace. He's just been overtaken by signs. I wonder if he's got a car issue. Or maybe he has damage or something. But he's dropping back as his teammate sets a new fastest lap. So contrasting fortunes at Mercedes. But the good thing is that we're well clear from the cars behind. Purple final sector. The track is getting faster and faster here. 
Let's try and see if we can get past Pierre Gasly. If not, then stick with him until the dry conditions. 45-4, purple sectors one and three. We were about three tenths off Hamilton's pace out front. He just set a new purple lap of a 45-1. So we're right on the pace here. This is really good for us. These conditions are perfect. I do need to try and save a bit more fuel though if possible because we're approaching half race distance and I've not really saved enough. But besides that, this is going bloody well for us. This race is turning out better than I ever expected. Oh, green flag. That means something's happened behind. Another personal best, but it looks like we can have a retirement on the cards here, and that usually means a safety car. So information on stroll, the yep, there you go. The race. Again, like always, safety car deployed. So, right, let's save a little bit of fuel in the safety car. I'm just going to keep it in standard, so I'll be saving a little bit, but not too much. Now, the question is, obviously, we're going to keep an eye on the sky, because that's going to mean there's a stronger chance the race could swap to dry tyres. Obviously, we're going to try and hold on to these inters and go straight for the dry tyre. We're not going to box another set of inters. That would be pointless. So at the minute, we're chilling in P6. Okay then, here we go. It's time for the safety car restart. Temperatures on the tyres look good, and we are ready to go. Saved a bit of fuel. So let's see how this restart goes. Can't see a damn thing right now, even though there's not a lot of water. Bit of spray being kicked up. Anyway, let's get back on the pace. Just try and, you know, hold on to this P6. That'll be more than enough for me. And then we transition to the dry conditions. At the minute, I've kind of got the medium tyre selected because I feel like the soft tyre could go off quite quickly, especially on a damp track where you might wheel spin and slide a lot. So I'm a little bit concerned about, you know, the duration of the soft tyre. So I've got mediums for now just to be safe. Oh, another yellow behind. Someone else has had a problem. Will that trigger a virtual or a full safety car? Okay, dry tyres, this lap. That's interesting. In that case, definitely it's going to be mediums for sure. The track has dried quite a lot in fairness, but I still feel like it's a bit early. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, Vettel out. Okay, we've got to take this. Yeah, we've got to take this VSC. This is a free pit stop. I might go for the hard tyre though. I feel like the medium is a bit far to go. I don't feel comf like comfortable going medium. I think that's a long way to the finish. So we're going to go for the hard tyre. Risky. We're going to be off the pace badly. I think we're going to be in trouble. Well, like I said, I think it's for the best. Let's see. VSC ending. George in as well. Hopefully I don't ruin his stop completely. I've been held. I've been held badly. Oh, damn it. Lost a bit of ground there. That's not good. All right. I'll come behind on softs. Interesting. Majority of cars seem to be going for the medium. All right, now fuel saving is going to be an issue because we haven't saved that much. In hindsight, I wish I'd saved more. Track feels terrible right now. There's no grip whatsoever. I'm trying to go on the outside of Lando here, but I don't really have grip on these. I think we're going to be in a bit of trouble with these tyres. Here comes Arcon. I'm not going to fight him because he's on softs. Makes no sense to battle with him. Let's just try and focus on our own race and try and get these tyres to work. We've got a bit of a breathing room gap now to Bottas behind. So let's try and push on here. Okay, we've got Giovinazzi in the pits. DRS now enabled. Signs in there as well. So we're back up to P7. We've lost one place, and that, of course, is to Esteban Arcon. But let's see what happens strategy-wise. Bottas seems to be fast again. He's back on pace. We've got Kvyat behind the soft tyres. So we are going to go backwards a little bit. But I am banking on some people stopping again, and also that the hard tyre coming good at the end of the race. I really hope this is the right call. Here comes Valtteri. I'm going to try and keep him behind for sector two at least. Don't want to let everyone buy it completely you know easily okay here comes Bottas I've dreamed my ERS in the first part of the straight he's gonna get the run on us here I'll try and fight if I can but I don't really want to lose too much time Fiat behind also we'll be getting by shortly I've just got to try and switch these tires on I feel like I'm getting into the temperature window now but I am still struggling a little bit for grip I'll try and keep Kvyat at bay for now don't want to let everyone buy too easily let's try and stick with Valtteri if we can Kvyat going for the move here. He's got momentum. We're going to go for a little tactical wave bite. And we'll just get DRS in the back straight, hopefully. And just stick with him, basically. Signs and Leclerc closing up now as well. I really hope this is the right call. I really hope I've not thrown the race away. All that hard work in the wet conditions. I'm going to try and hold on to a bit of DRS if I can. Still trying to save fuel as well. We're still a long way away from being safe. Okay, signs might go by here. I'm going to try and defend. Trying to see if I can ruin his mediums a little bit, but he's got a lot of overspeed here. Can't really do much about that. 
I don't really want to drain all of my ERS because it's quite hard to charge actually around here and I want to try and save some back for the end of the race when I'm going to be at my quickest. The last five laps is where I'm banking on making a bit of progress and kind of, you know, pushing a little bit. I'll have the best tires I've ever want. Let's keep going then. Personal best. I've been able to save a bit of fuel as well. So that's good. We've got just two more cars behind. So worst case scenario, we'll be, we'll be chilling in P12. Obviously, we're getting a few places back due to those on soft tires. So I think we will score points. The question is how many? Okay, here comes Leclerc now. Will he go for the move? Looks like he will. I'm going to move across a little bit. Try and defend it. Oh, Albon's going to box me in here, so I can't really do much about that. I'm just going to take a back seat to all of this, really. I feel like every lap is getting easier to follow people now. The hard times are starting to come into their own a little bit. So I'm going to try and stick with Albon and Leclerc. If anybody is draining my ERS, I'm going to try and not lose any more ground if possible. And there we go, Kafiat in the pit lane. So back up to P11, personal best on that lap. I have dropped out of the RS range of Albon, but not by much. I feel like the medium tyre runners are starting to lose the edge a bit in terms of their pace. So every lap will hopefully go my way a little bit more. Oh, okay, Ocon in. Gasly as well, also going for the soft tyre. So we're now P9 and back in the points. I do wonder if maybe some of those medium guys might pit. They probably won't, but I'll be ready to pounce if they do. If not, hopefully we'll benefit at the end of the race. Worst case scenario, Ricardo passes me and we finish P10. But Grosjean's not fast enough to catch me now, so we're looking good. Fuel is almost back on target, which is great as well. Pierre Gasly, new fastest lap. He's flying behind us. He's gone aggressive with a double soft tyre after the switch to the dry tyre. And uh, hopefully Ricardo can keep him busy because I don't want no business with Pierre Gasly. Hopefully we can use that to pull away. Just under three laps to go now. Okay, Ricardo's pretty close here. I'm going to have to just drain the entire battery to try and stay ahead. Gasly now getting the overspeed as well. I'm going to have to go defensive. Into the hairpin we go. Ricardo trying to outbreak. We're going to hold it on the inside. Can I get the drive? Just about. And we crucially just stay ahead. But this battle isn't over yet. We're going to have to use ERS again here just to stay ahead into turn one. We know how fast the Alpha Tower is on the straight. And here they come. I'm going to keep my car in the middle of the track to avoid being dive bombed. Keep a tight line through one and two. Again, to try and avoid getting dived. We're hanging in there. For now. Okay, Gasly and Ricardo battling. They're 1.2 behind. As I set a personal best on that lap, I'm pushing as hard as I can to try and solidify these two points. Let's see if we can hang on now for the final lap of the race. Okay, here we go then. Last lap. Last defensive manoeuvre. Pierre's going to, of course, push me all the way to the line. Hamilton wins. Nice exit out of there. Really nice traction through the banking. I'm going to let Pierre get the run here early on. I'm going to save my ERS for the second half of the straight, which is now. Trying to give it everything we've got to see if we can hold on. Down the inside. Oh, I get squeezed. Have to back off. And unfortunately, Gasly is going to nick it. That's a shame. We tried. It wasn't to be, though. And we're going to finish in P10. We're going to score a point, but there was so much more potential today. Yes, another historic win under their belts. Well done to the team at Mercedes. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today.
Well, there we go then. That is it for the race here today. Hamilton picks up the win. Verstappen finishes in second place and Bottas P3. I recognise that podium from somewhere as Perez finishes P4 actually for the racing point. Aston Martin team ahead of Lando and Carlos and McLaren. Albon P7 in the second Red Bull ahead of Leclerc in the first Ferrari. Gasly P9 with the fastest lap and we finish in P10. Missing out on the points, you have both Renault Alpines with Ricardo and Ocon, Kafiat. Uh, Grosjean, Magnussen, Russell P16 ahead of Giovinazzi, Matsushita and Vettel and Stroll out of the race. We look at the standings and after four rounds we are currently sixth in the Drivers' Championship with Verstappen leading by seven points and in general we're looking pretty decent but there's a few cars in the mix and we need to try and separate ourselves from the pack. We look at the constructors and we're up to fifth place overtaking Renault Alpine as we're equal on points but on count back due to a higher finishing position we are in P5. So happy days and Mercedes equal on points but take the lead over Red Bull there as well. So there you go, there's your lot for the race. We're now going to move into the menu and put upgrades onto our car. Did you struggle to get through all that traffic today? No, surprisingly we didn't. It was actually quite a good race for us obviously we had some issues on the dry conditions with the with the dry tires but in general the car felt really good and i really really enjoyed it and i could just go flat out you're breaking all expectations what's your secret well it's pretty simple i think you know we've got a great team and over the last year you've seen the improvement and we're just willing to put the work in did you feel comfortable in the wet weather today yeah, yeah. I, like, I like the rain, you know, the rain is always good fun and of course it gives us the opportunity to, you know, to do something in a race which is really, really exciting. Great, well that's everything. Now then, as you can see, we look at the rivalry breakdown. Again, Alex does outscore us as you'd expect, unfortunately. Not much we can really do right now. He's got the measure of us. You know, I was ahead in the race, but I kind of threw it away uh, going for the hard tyres. But I wasn't confident about making it with tyre wear. In terms of reclaim, we gain a little bit after that race, but no big changes. So now let's jump into the upgrades. Okay then, so the next race is in 10 days time. We've got a personnel upgrade on the 22nd, which is good in terms of upgrading that in a particular department. And we've got some more resource points coming in on the 27th. Now, we currently have 1,700 points to spend, so we're going to go ahead and spend those. First of all, of course, we're going to repurchase the fouled upgrade we should have had for this race. And then on top of that, looking elsewhere, chassis were at the bottom, aero were at the bottom. I'm going to continue with this actually, and I'm going to go ahead and buy this minor one. Actually, never mind. I can't actually afford it. A minor upgrade is over a thousand R&D points, which is pretty crazy. So maybe on the chassis. Okay, there we go. We can go for a chassis one for the weight reduction so we can get that on the car and that shouldn't be an issue. So there we go. Two upgrades on the way and uh, fingers crossed they will arrive without any issues and we can close the gap to Renault and Alpha Tauri. So let's go ahead and let's skip ahead to the next race in Zandvoort. And there we go then, we're ready for round five at Zandvoort for the Dutch Grand Prix. Upgrade has arrived, in this case the major um, upgrade for the aerodynamics is on now on the car. So yeah, we're taking a step forward, which is good. We're still at the bottom, but hopefully we can try and you know improve in the next few races. But crucially, we're ready to go. And the plan this season is to bring an upgrade to every single race, simple as that. So yeah, guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, then feel free to leave a like. Let's try and hit 1,200 likes on today's episode. Subscribe for more daily F1 content, guys. We're getting closer and closer now to 60,000 subs, guys. We're not too far away, so any help would be massively appreciated. And as always, thank you to the members of the channel. And uh, also, if you haven't done so already, check out the two videos on screen if you have missed them. But guys, I'll see you next time. Until then, take care. And let's go back from me.